How nice it would be if the victims of all the unsolved cases could find a way to tell the world the reason for their death or about their murderers. But nothing like this can happen. It is not possible at all. You are thinking something like this, aren't you? But would you believe me if I told you that there are some cases in which the victim's spirits communicated with the people to let them know about their terrible fate? Today, I have such a story for all my subscribers in which the spirit of a woman was so determined as if she had decided she would not leave her place until she gets justice. This case involves a Filipino woman named Teresita Basa. It was the year 1929, and Teresita was in her 30s. She moved to the United States to study music. She eventually settled in Chicago, Illinois, and later worked as a respiratory therapist at Edgewater Hospital. She was described as a modest, kind, and hardworking woman who devoted all her time to the patients at the hospital. No one can imagine anyone having spite against her. Teresita's family can never forget that scary night of 21st February, 1977. This was the day that convinced every person that ghosts do exist around us. At around 10.30 p.m., a neighbor called the fire department as he saw thick black smoke billowing from Teresita's flat. When the firefighters arrived at the apartment, they found a mattress on fire in the living room, and thankfully, the fire was put out quickly, and the entire apartment did not catch fire. The firefighters noticed a small hump on the mattress and lifted it to discover a woman's naked body. It was Teresita Passa, who would be 48 years old at the time. Police interviewed Teresita's family and friends, but found no leads as to who might have wanted to kill her. After a thorough search of the apartment, the police found a clue that was a note in her diary reading, get tickets for AS. Obviously, she would have written down this on paper as it was 1973 and people wrote things on notepads only to remember their everyday tasks. Now, the police had to find out who A.S. was. Who was it that Teresita knew and did such a horrible thing to her? Six months passed and the police could not solve the case, and then came a tip again. But this time, it was a bit strange. A surgeon named Dr. Jose Shua claimed that his wife, Remy, who worked as a respiratory therapist, just like Teresita in the same hospital, had been possessed by Teresita's ghost he said that whenever his wife was possessed, she spoke in Teresita's native language. Her first words were, Doctor, I would like to ask for your help. The man who murdered me is still at large. Dr. Schwa stated that while Teresita possessed his wife, she said she was murdered by a man named Alan Showery, who came to her apartment to repair her TV and then stabbed her to death to steal her jewelry. Wait for a second. If it was just a case of theft, then why were there no clothes on Teresita's body? To find out, it is necessary to know what the complete message was that Teresita tried to convey to the police through Remy's body. The couple told the police that Teresita's spirit would never let them live peacefully if they did not help her. Detectives were interested in Schwa's claims. Alan Showery's initials were AS, which they'd seen in Teresita's diary. Police called Dr. Schwa and his wife Remy to the police station to find out the complete truth. Remy said that she began to have these bizarre encounters of Teresita's spirit just after her death. One night, Remy was in the hospital because of her night shift. She went to the hospital's lounge to take a break while she saw Teresita's spirit right in front of her. She wanted to forget this encounter, thinking she had just had a bad dream and nothing else. But when the same thing happened to her again, she got scared and assumed that Teresita's spirit was still wandering and wanted to say something to her. Now, this was about to happen for the second time, Remy reached her home in an exhausted condition from the hospital at midnight. When her husband asked her, is everything okay? She suddenly started talking in Tagalog language, Teresita's native language, and that too, in a completely different tone. It seemed like someone else was speaking, not Remy. Remy was asleep, but more in a possessive state. She said, my name is Teresita Basa, and I request you to go to the police station to help me solve my case. The person who took my life is Alan Showery. Teresita legit took the name of her murderer using Remy's body as a host. After some 30 minutes, Remy came out of her trance state, but she didn't remember anything. It usually happens in possession stories in which the ghost uses someone's body to speak its words. And because your body was used as a host over which you had no control, you don't remember anything after being in that state.
Remy's husband thought it was all nonsense, and even if there is some truth in their story, no one will believe their words, so they decided not to take it to the police. After a few days, Remy got possessed for the third time. She kept asking why neither of them had gone to the police till now. Remy's husband requests Teresita Spirit to stop bothering them because no one would believe their statement until they had some physical evidence. On this, Teresita said that physical evidence would be found at Alan's house only. Alan stole Teresita's jewelry after killing her and gave it to his girlfriend. Remy and her husband didn't want to be troubled any longer, so they decided to go to the police station as Teresita wanted. Investigators don't even have any other way to solve the case, so they thought to believe in the couple's story, but the police's search investigation just ended in half a day because they found a man named Alan in the same hospital where Teresita used to work. Alan was employed as a technician in the respiratory area of the hospital. Further investigation revealed that Alan had previous assault and robbery convictions. The police called Alan's girlfriend for questioning and asked her to bring all the jewelry boxes Alan had given her. Teresita's relatives also reached the police station and recognized some of Teresita's jewelry from the boxes. Alan now understood that he needed to confess his crime. Alan said that he had no enmity with Teresita. That day he had gone to fix the TV at her house and the accident happened. Alan did not give any reason for committing the crime and when he was brought to court, surprisingly, he said that he had not committed any such crime. He claimed that he gave the false confession under the pressure of the police and was eventually found not guilty by the court. The public agreed with the court's decision as the majority didn't want to believe in such a ghost story. Here I am talking about those who do not believe in ghost stories or paranormal activities until they've gone through it. No one was ready to believe Remy's ghost story as well. When this case became a topic of discussion everywhere, everyone started speculating that Remy would have some or the other enmity with Alan, and that's why she's making up a false ghost story to take her revenge. If this is true, then how was Teresita's jewelry found with Alan's girlfriend and that note in which A.S. was written? And the Teresita's jewelry also disappeared from the house. There are so many mysteries in this case. The more you go into its depths, the more you will be shaken. Let me know in the comments section about your thoughts on this case. Did Teresita really use Remy's body as the host to get justice? And if not, how did Remy know every detail related to Teresita's murder case?